Hi there, Kat from Healthy Hobbyist once again. We've got another slow flow yoga for you. Today's focus will be hips and back bends. I'm gonna be doing some good mobility training that will get deeper into the hip region. We'll do a bit of back bending and combine the two. Um, so if you're on the beginner side, I'm gonna give you some modifications, but if you are working on a bit of deeper mobility in the hips, I'm gonna give you some options to get a bit deeper today especially if you've got a yoga strap on hand. If you do have a yoga strap, I recommend getting it set up so that you have a little loop that is tight so that you'll be able to pull on it. So kind of securing it off into a loop and then having a tail. If you have a block, that will also be really helpful today. If you don't have anything that you can kind of make into that similar strap situation, then don't worry, I'll give you modifications. But get your props, get ready, and let's get started. Hi there, Cat Healthy Hobbyists. About to start live slow flow here. As always, if my stream cuts out, looks like it's already doing weird stuff. I don't know if it is for you. But if my stream cuts out, then I will start it again. If you're here, let me know. Say hi. Facebook Live doesn't show me who you are. Let's see here. Is the uh, live feed looking really strange to you guys or do I look okay? It looks like it's flickering for me. Let me know if it seems to be working all right. If it's working all right, then I'll just go ahead and get started. If it's flickering, I may try and start it fresh. Okay, let's see. I think I started in just a second here. I might restart the feed. It looks like my live looks okay to you. Okay, well, if it looks okay to you, then I don't care if it's flickering. Let me know if it ends up looking weird and then I can kind of restart it. Let's see. Okay, perfect. So today, some stuff that will be really helpful to have on hand is if you have a strap. So in particular, having a yoga strap that's kind of set up in this kind of loop shape. Um, so kind of getting something so you can have a loop and then pull will be really helpful today. If you do, do not have a yoga strap, fear not. I'm going to give you some options to go without one. But if you've got a strap, grab it and get it set up. And then as always, a block is going to be really helpful and a blanket today. We're going to be doing some really good deep hip stuff. And I'm going to give folks some options for... Some more complicated postures if you're so inclined, but again, fear not. All right, let's get going. <laughs> my life, you look so weird on my end. I'm glad that it looks better for you. It's like creepy what it's doing on my end. It's like flickering pictures from the past. <laughs> all right, stupid Facebook Live. I will be posting a high res version of this on YouTube once it's all done. So if you'd rather do that, stick around. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Just find your way onto your mat. I'm actually going to grab my phone really quickly if I can find it. Just so that I can get the time set up. All right. So go ahead and find your way onto your mat. In my classes, I always start off with a meditation. So either sitting up in 
a kneeling position or you can sit cross-legged, either is fine. Just finding a nice upright posture, so seated nice and tall, maybe closing the eyes if it's comfortable. Let's do a breathing exercise together. Let's start by exhaling all of our air. Breathe in through the nose. Hold that breath. And then exhale. Maybe out the mouth. Breathe in. Hold it. And out the mouth. Breathe in through the nose. Hold it. And exhale out the mouth. Breathe in. Hold. And out. Now let your breathing come to any natural rhythm. Just notice See if you can search for where you notice your breath the most. Maybe you notice it as it comes in through the nose. Maybe you can feel as it passes down into the lungs. Maybe you notice the sensation of your body expanding or contracting. Maybe you feel the warm air as it leaves, escapes the body. Wherever you notice your breath, just focus on that. Letting your body and shoulders soften and relax. Just noticing your breath. Take a deep breath into your nose. Big exhale out the mouth. Next inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale out the mouth, take the arms down. Two more like this, in. In. Good, release the arms. Let them rest in your lap. Start to blink open the eyes. Good, nice and slow, come into a tabletop position. Coming onto all fours. We're gonna warm up the spine gently, classic cat and cow here. So as you inhale, drop the belly, really pull the heart through, maybe the chin lifts up. And as you exhale around your spine, press through your fingertips and palms, tuck the chin towards the chest. Good, back and forth on your own. Kind of just moving here. A few things I want you to focus on as you move through cat and cow. Really focus on your palms. So pressing down that first knuckle near the fingers, right on the palm. Dig the fingertips in, really stabilize through your base. 
And then think about your pelvis. So really untucking, really accentuating that. So sticking that tailbone up, up, up in the air and then really tucking it underneath as far as it will go. Good. And a few more in and out. Good, just come to your neutral table pop position. Let's warm up the hips. Take the right leg straight out, keeping it in a 90 degree angle. Try not to sway over to your left. Keep yourself as centered as you can. Draw some nice big circles with that right leg. Keeping it in that 90 degree angle shape for the most part and just rotating open. Try to keep the arms and the grounded nature of the fingers and palms. Just circle the other way a few times. Really big circles. We're going to be getting pretty deep into the hips today, so we got to warm them up. Good. And then release that. Let's come to the other side. Take that left leg straight out and again, circle. Good. Really big. Now circle the other way. Taking the leg really up and then wide. Good. And then release. Let's work a little bit on strength while we strengthen our back and our belly. Take the right leg straight up, point the toe. Lift the leg as high as it will go up towards the ceiling. Add a little bit of a back bend. So think about that cow pose. So drop the belly, pull the heart through. Good. Inhale. Exhale, think about cat pose. Round, knee towards the nose. Really get in there tight. Good. Inhale, lift the foot up, little back bend. Exhale, round back and forth. And this time I want you to focus on your foot. Think about really lifting it high as well as adding in that little bit of a back bend. So dropping the belly, releasing the pelvis. Let's do five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Good, and then just switch it out. Let's go with that left leg now. So lift the left leg up here. I'm just gonna rotate. Same thing, so really point that left toe up, up, up towards the ceiling. Good, now drop the belly down, pull the heart through. Now exhale around. Back and forth. Think about the palms, don't forget those. We're really grounded through our hands. Back and forth, up and down. Exhaling as you curl, inhaling as you come up. Let's do four, three, two, and one. Last one, kicking up and release, good. Going to continue, we're going to start to strengthen the hip now. So just take the right leg straight back, point the toe, good. Keep the right hip closing down so we're not kind of opening and lifting here. Now just take the foot out to the right, tap it down, and then take it back. We're just going to go back and forth, tapping and taking it back. If it's too intense, it doesn't have to go so far. Up to you how far you go. Let's do just five. Back and forth. Four, three, two, keep the arms engaged, one, good. Switching to the other side, extend your left leg back, good, point the toe, keep the left hip closing down, inhale, exhale, take it out wide, tap it down, and then take it back. Just back and forth for five. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Go ahead and sit on your bum. We're going to work on some mobility now, a little bit less strength, now that we're nice and warm. 
All right, so I want you to take yourself into a 90, 90 degree angle. So take the front, the right leg in front, and then the left leg back. So I'm kind of creating this 90 degree angle with my right leg to the front of my mat, and then my left leg is at a 90 degree angle out. So some modifications, if this feels really uncomfortable already, you can roll up something like a blanket or a block, and you can sit on that and elevate your hips. That will be a bit easier for some, especially if you find that your hips are very tight. All right, so get yourself set up here. A few things to start. Just take your hands on to the right leg. I want you to sit up nice and tall. Good. And I want you to feel like you're pressing your right knee down. So really press the right knee strong into the ground. And then resist with your hands, but try to lift your knee up. You're not actually going to physically be doing that. You're going to keep it down, but try. So resisting here. And then go back and forth. So press the knee down. And then press the knee up, but resist with the hands. So back and forth here. You'll start to kind of feel the hips really firing up. Your back hip and glute will also be working a bit here. Just up and down. So pressing my knee in, pressing my knee up, but resisting with my hands. Keep sitting up nice and tall as you do this back and forth. Let's just do about five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Staying on the right side, we're just going to turn ourselves open towards our left leg. Take your hands behind you for support. Good. Now I want you to open your left knee back as much as you can. If you're able, maybe come to a flat foot, really thinking about opening, opening, opening wide. For some, that's not going to be possible. That's okay. But just try your best. Good. Breathe here. And this is our position one. Position two, the knee comes back down shift towards the front, lift the foot as much as you can. Just the foot, not the knee. Good. Try to keep yourself as upright as you can. Try not to lean forward. This is your position two. Now we're going to go back and forth. Position one, open, open the knee. Good. And then close, lift the foot. Go back and forth at your own pace here. Open the knee and then square back to the front, lift the foot. Good. If you get a little bit of a cramp in the left glute, that's okay. Just really squeeze the muscles tight. Work through it. It'll release itself. Good. Opening and closing. Let's just do four, three, two, and one. Let's hold the left knee open for an extra five, four, Think about pressing your right knee down, opening the left away. Three, two, one. Take the left knee back down. Really lift the foot. Try not to lean forward. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch it out. Just swivel yourself or just take the alternate leg in front, whatever's easiest for you. All right, left leg is in front now. Right leg is bent. So again, hips can be on something if they need. Take your hands onto that left leg. We're gonna go with just that knee up, knee down sensation. So start by pressing your left knee down firmly. And then think about really trying to lift the knee up, but you're pressing down so you can't actually lift it. And then press it down, lift it up. Just go back and forth here. This is a really nice kind of easy one for building a bit of strength, warming it up especially if you're sitting all day. This will feel really good after. Do a few more up and down. Good. And then release. Open yourself towards the right. Take the hands behind you. Open the right knee as much as you can, maybe coming to a flat foot. Left knee presses down. Right leg really opens wide. Good. It's a moment to establish this. And then take the knee back down, square it off. Try to stay upright, just lift the foot. It's okay if it just lifts a tiny bit. For some, that's as far as it will go. Good. Now we're gonna come back and forth. Open the knee, close the knee, lift the foot. Back and forth, go at your own pace. 
It's okay if you get a cramp, it means you're working hard. Just really engage, squeeze that muscle. It'll release itself if it cramps up. Good. Let's do five, four, three, two, one. Next time you lift that foot up, just hold. Let's hold it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Open the knee. Let's hold this position. Really squeeze. So left knee presses down, right knee really opens. Five, four, three, two, one. One, release, good. All right, let's go ahead and get on our feet. Take yourself into Malasana. Take your feet as wide as your mat. If you're able, pull yourself up. If that doesn't work, then just get onto your feet. Take your feet as wide as your mat and then sit it on down. Good. Encourage your knees open nice and wide, lengthening through the spine here. Good. Take five breaths. And we're engaged a bit through this. So engaging through your pelvic floor so that you're actually lifting up and we're not kind of weighting down. You want to feel like you're rising up out of this weight on the outer edges of your feet. Three, two, one. Hands down, forward fold. Lift your hips up. Take your feet about hip width distance and fold. Grab your opposite elbows and sway. Good. Release your hands down towards the ground. Roll up to standing as you inhale. Good. As you stand up, reach up. And exhale your hands to prayer. Come to the top of your mat, feet together. Good. From here, just step your right foot back, come into your high lunge. Sweep the arms up, good. We're gonna come into a bit of a dynamic high lunge. So take your hands onto the top of your left leg. I want you to really sink down. So you're lunging pretty deep into your front knee, really straight into that back leg, good. Then I want you to kind of take yourself forward and back, kind of pointing your right toe, sending yourself forward, really heavy in the hips. If it's too intense, hands can be on the ground. You can always have your hand on a block or something like that if you need a little bit extra support. Try to keep your hips squaring, especially your right one, really kind of getting into that right hip flexor. Good. And then drop your back knee, come to low lunge. Reach the arms up. Exhale, back bend. Draw your heart and belly up. Good. Take your hands onto your hips. I want to work a little bit on the position of the back bend. It's going to be important today that we understand it. So really release your hips. So think about pouring that pelvic bowl forward and down, reaching your tailbone back, untucking. Now take your hand, right hand onto your heart and imagine pushing your chest up into your hand. So really lifting, lifting, lifting up. Good. Then look up. Now take the arms up. Really squeeze, hold this position. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lengthen your spine, reach up. Exhale, take the hands down, come to half split. So straighten your left leg, adjust as you need. So really flex that left foot, digging the left heel in as much as you can. Keep pulling your left hip back. Good. Flexing the toes towards your face really powerfully. And going for a straight spine here. And just like a back bend pelvis, we want to be releasing our pelvis. So we're not tucking the tailbone at all here. The more we release our tailbone, we'll get a nice deep stretch to the whole backside of our left leg. Maybe bend into the elbows, bring yourself a little deeper into this. 
If you find that you're starting to round, just come up a bit higher. Think about pulling your chest forward and then hinging just at the hips. Now see if you can engage your core, take yourself 10% deeper. For five, four, three, two, and one. So nice and slow, we're gonna sit back. I'm gonna give you an option. So I'm sitting myself back onto the inside of my heel. If you know that is not gonna work for you, then just release that and take the foot to the inside of the thigh. That's your option modification. Otherwise, having that foot tucked right behind you, sitting on the inside of your heel. Having the left leg straight, and then gently fold into this. Same thing, nice long spine here, maybe reaching for the foot or the calf, lengthening the tailbone back while the head reaches forward. Take four more breaths here. And this is a really nice one for our ankle mobility on our right side. Something to kind of work into. If this is not accessible, you can roll up something like a pillow or a blanket and sit on it so that you're able to get into this posture and eventually work yourself down to the floor. Good, nice and slow, start to sit on up and extend your right leg straight out. Just kind of wave the feet back and forth, release the legs for a moment. We're gonna see if we can get actively up into Malasana. So once again, take your feet wide. If you're able to get there, then great. If not, get yourself to standing and come down. Kind of rock it forward and back once or twice and then use your strength, get to your pelvic floor. Whoop. Pull yourself up and then take yourself back down if you can. Do a few of these up and down, taking yourself back, pulling yourself back and forth into Malasana. If that's not working, modification, just a little up and down for you in your Malasana. That will work similar strength. Good. Let's just do five of these. Engage your pelvic floor as you come up. That will lift you up four, three, Two, last one, Malasana. Let's hold it here, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down and fold. Take your feet back into neutral. Roll on up to standing. Inhale. Exhale the hands to prayer. Same thing, other side. Just step that left foot back. Coming into that high lunge, take your hands onto your hips, actually onto the front right leg. Really sink it down low on this one. So really bending into the front knee, doing your best to straighten that back leg. And again, we're gonna take ourselves kind of forward and back, thinking about pointing our left toe, and then kind of coming more back onto the ball of the foot. Again, modifications, a block, or anything that will elevate your hands is a nice modification here. More hands onto the floor, it's okay if that's necessary. Five, four, three, two, one. Drop the back knee. Good. Take the arms up, inhale. As you exhale, little back bend. Take the arms open wide, then hands onto the hips. Same thing here. If you think about the pelvis as a bowl, I've used this analogy a lot, you want to be pouring your bowl forward and down. So really releasing the pelvis so that the tailbone is untucked, pointing back. And then take your right hand onto your heart, lift the chest up into the right hand. So really lifting here. Releasing the pelvis, lifting up, reach the arms up, inhale. Exhale, cactus the arms. Hold this five, four, 
but breathe. Don't hold your breath. Three, two, one. Reach the arms up. Inhale. Exhale. Take your hands down. Move into your half split. Straighten the right leg. Flex the right toes towards the face and dig the heel down into the ground and feel like you're trying to pull the leg back. Find a nice long spine here. So if you're not able to do so with the hands on the ground, modification, use a block. If you round a little bit through the spine, it's okay. Nothing bad will happen. You're just stretching more of your back than your hamstring. Think about the pelvis here too. You do not want to be tucking it. That's why we're not rounding our spine. We're flattening our back, releasing our pelvis, getting deep into the back of that right leg. Engage your belly. See if you can take yourself 10% deeper. And once again, I'm going to land myself back onto my bum. If you know that this variation is not for you, then just come to sit on your butt. Otherwise, nice and slow, you're going to come to sit down on the inside of your foot. Again, the option variation is your left foot comes to the inside of your thigh here. Otherwise, that left foot is just pulling back to our side. And then gently fold here. Same thing, nice long spine, untuck that pelvis, find length through the spine. Try not to lean over to the right. Try to keep your left sit bone down as you lengthen through the top of your head. All right, go ahead and come on up. Release both legs long out in front of you. Shake it out. We're going to do that same little mobility challenge here. So coming into our malasana, so kind of finding your way up into your malasana. Alternatively, a little up and down. This is your modification. If you're not able to come all the way back onto your butt and pull yourself up. Just back and forth. We're going to do five. Four. Three, two, one more. Hold your malasana here. Breathe. Hands can come to prayer. Take your hands down, hips up so that you fold. Let your head be heavy. Inhale, roll on up to standing. And then exhale your hands to prayer. Good. Take yourself and face the long side of your mat and take your feet pretty wide. And take your toes to point out. Good. Now we're just going to kind of work ourselves left and right a little bit here. Just bending into the knees back and forth. And then we're going to take it a little bit lower. If you've got a block, having that handy might be helpful here. Good. Now take yourself all the way over into the right side, bending the right knee, really sink into this low. Have the hands either on the ground or on a block. And try to keep that left foot down. So don't rock up onto it. Really drive that foot down. Doesn't matter if it's turned forward or open, wherever is fine. If you can, take your right hand down to the ground, almost like you're in a side lunge. Use that right arm to encourage your right knee open. Good. And just like a side lunge, reach that left arm long. Really sink the hips super low here. Just kind of in a little modified side lunge. Good. Take both hands down to the ground. Walk it over to the other side. 
And again, come nice and deep into this. Use that left arm. Encourage that left knee really open here. Kind of sinking the hips really low. And then lift up through the chest. Take the right arm long. If that's too much, hands can stay on the ground. Really just feel that sinking through the hips. Good, take both hands into center, and then turn both toes to point in, and then fold, wide leg forward fold. Walk both of your hands over to the right foot. Take your left hand, grab onto the left foot, or anywhere on that left leg, and then reach the right arm up, twisting here. Breathe deeply into the belly. Good, just take the right hand back down to the foot and really fold into this. Try to take your forehead towards your right shin. Move over to the other side. Take your right hand, grab hold of anything that you can, the foot or the shin is fine, and then reach the left arm up. Left hand comes back down, but then really fold into this. Think forehead towards the shin. Then take yourself nice and slow back into center and fold. Good. Bend the knees, inhale, come on up to standing nice and slow, reach it up. And then exhale the hands to prayer. Good. Turn back towards the front of your mat and gently step it forward. Good. All right, from here, step your right foot back and come to low lunge, so drop your back knee. I do recommend padding the back knee unless you're on my carpet or something pretty gentle. Just a little bit of extra beneath the knee will feel pretty good. Good. And then have your straps somewhat handy for this one. We're going to warm it up first before we get to that, but just have it there. So come into your deep low lunge, taking yourself pretty far forward here. Good. Reach the arms up. Inhale. Now as you exhale, I want you to back bend. Really lift the heart up. Good. Take your hands onto your hips. Use your, your hands to support yourself. So kind of pushing the back up, lifting through the heart. Really deeply bending into that front knee. Maybe back bending a bit deeper here. Good, nice and slow, come back up into neutral. So from our neutral lunge position, I want you to bend your back knee, grab hold with your right foot if you can. If you do have a strap there, we are gonna grab the strap for this in just a moment, but I'm gonna give you a few modifications. So take yourself a little bit deeper, lunging more forward. If you have a block, and this is hard for you balance-wise, a block to the left hand is helpful. Otherwise, just use the top of the left leg and dig in deep to the quad stretch. This is where you will stay if you do not want to go deeper. If you want to go deeper, grab hold of your strap and get it around your right foot. Good. And you want it kind of towards the top of the foot near the ball of the foot. And then take the little tail over your right shoulder. Once again, deeply lunge and then give that strap a tug. Adjust it so it's more towards the top of the foot and pull it in as far as it will go. And then I want you to reach your right hand as far back as it will go, thinking about landing the elbow up towards the ceiling. Block again is helpful here. Really dig in deep. Now option, you're adding a little bit of the back bend here. So we're going towards the foot towards the head. And breathe wherever you are. Just keep pulling the foot in, keep lifting the heart up. Doesn't worry, don't worry so much about the foot to the head. That's just what this pose is going towards. And you just breathe here five, four, three, two, 
and one. Nice and slow, release that. Take both of your hands to the ground and then just come into a tabletop position. Release the strap and a few cat and cow. Nice and easy. And then child's pose. Take the knees a little wide and sit back onto the heels. Good. When you're ready, come back into your tabletop position. And then we're going to switch to the other side. So just take your left foot between, or actually, sorry, other side, right foot between this time. Good. And then first things first, just come into that nice deep lunge, taking yourself pretty far forward. Reach the arms up, inhale. Exhale, take your hands onto your hips and allow the back bend. So really releasing the pelvis, lift the heart up to hands or here as a bit of support. Let's find the back bend first, really send the hips down, feeling the stretch through that hip flexor. Doesn't have to be super deep, but if you want, you can enter a bit of a deeper back bend here, lifting the heart up and breathe. As you inhale, lengthen the spine, come back into neutral, then just bend the left knee, grab hold first. This is your first option, this is where you can stay. Let's all stay here for a few breaths. Good. Either stay here or grab your strap. Get it looped around, and even if you're not interested in getting towards the final pose, which is the foot touching the head, having the strap helps incredibly with getting a bit deeper into this one. So once again, kind of lasso the foot, get the strap over the shoulder, find some stability. I know it's hard balance-wise in this one. The block really helps. And get the foot as in as you can, and then get the hand as far back as you can. Think about the elbow up. And then lift the heart up, lift the belly up, pull the foot in. Good. And breathe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice and slow, release that. Once again, come into your tabletop position and come into child's pose. Good. On your next inhale, come into your tabletop position. Let's come to downward facing dog. Move your strap out of the way. Take five breaths here. Good. As you inhale, reach your right leg up high. As you exhale, come to pigeon. Bring your right knee over towards the right. And then your foot kind of tucking more back towards your hip. So we're going to stay upright for this one. And if your hips are a little elevated like mine are, having a blanket underneath your floating hip will really help. So I'm going to give you some options to go into deeper king pigeon here. So if you're interested, once again, lasso your foot with that strap loop. Good. If you do not have the strap, just reach back with the left hand, grab hold. If you've got the strap, get it over your left shoulder. And same thing, really pull it in and then reach the hand as far back as it will go, elbow up. And then think about lifting the heart up, lift the belly up. Wherever you are, just breathe here for five, 
four, three, two, and one. Nice and slow release the left foot. And we're gonna come all the way down. Walk the hands forward, maybe come to the forearms. We're come to lie all the way flat. Let your belly be soft, really breathe into this. We're gonna stay for a little bit, so take about five to eight more deep breaths. Good, nice and slow, come back up onto the palms. If you've got the strap on the foot, then just move it out of the way for now. And just gently come to downward facing dog. If you'd rather lift the right leg up and wind it out here, feel free. Otherwise, we'll just meet in downward facing dog in just a moment. Taking a few breaths, either holding downward dog or working out the hip. Whenever you're ready, we're just gonna switch sides. So from downward dog, reaching the left leg up high. And then exhale, take the left leg down into your pigeon. Walking the back knee back. Same thing here, my hips kind of float. So having something underneath my hip makes it so that this pose is a bit easier. Good. And then if you're gonna come into the attempted or just towards the king pigeon, then you have the strap on the foot. And again, if you do not have the strap, just bend the right knee, grab hold, and give it a pull. You can come to an alternative pose like mermaid if you'd prefer. Otherwise, get the strap over the shoulder. Good. And really pull it in as far as you can, and then reach the hand far back, and then think about pointing your elbow up towards the ceiling. This is as far as you need to go. If you want to come a little deeper, then you can see if you're able to back bend. Try not to push it here. Breathe wherever you can manage. Five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release the right leg. And then come all the way maybe down to the forearms. Or all the way flat. And relax. And just soften into this, breathe into your belly. about five more breaths or so deep into the nose and out
When you're ready, coming on to the palms once again. Making your way into downward facing dog, feel free to remove that strap first. And if you like lifting the right or the left leg up and back, opening the hip, that's an option. Otherwise, just come to downward dog. Take a few breaths wherever you'd like. And then nice and slow, we're going to come down onto our knees. And then turn so that you're facing the long side of your mat, we're going to come into our frog position. So I like to add a little bit of extra cushion for this, especially because I'm on a hardwood floor. But if you're not on a hardwood floor, then you probably don't need any extra cushion. Taking it the length of your mat, take your knees down as wide as you can get them. And I'm going to turn so you can see a different point of view here. So there's a lot of variation in frog pose. So I'm going to walk you through a lot of the different variations. So pointing the toes, toes together, kind of like child's pose is an option. The hips more back towards the heels is an option or forward. So kind of move forward and back in this position, see how this feels. And what you're looking for is a nice deep stretch. You don't want to feel like you're just hitting like a block. Like in some cases, the way that our hip joint is shaped, you might just feel like you're hitting a wall that's literally bone to bone. So if you feel something like that, maybe try taking the feet out and then you can try turning the toes out or pointing. Either one is fine here. And same thing, maybe take the hips forward and back. And then pick whichever one feels best for you. For me, it's a little bit better. If my feet are in toes pointed. So that's the one that I'll pick. Once you're in a position that you're like, okay, that feels like a pretty good stretch, hold it there and then come down to the forearms. And you can stay here or if it's available, you can come all the way down to the chest. We're going to stay here for a bit. So try to find something that you can maintain, maybe close the eyes. Breathe deeply into your belly. Focusing on ballooning up your body. Letting your hips be very heavy. Soften through your feet. And I know this is intense. Just stick in there if you can. Hang in there, breathe. If you feel like you've got space to go deeper, go deeper. Just five more deep breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Almost there, four. Three. Two. And one. Slowly come back onto the forearms first and then nice and slow onto the palms. Very slowly take your hands a bit forward so that your hips pull forward and then drag the knees in nice and slow. It'll probably feel a bit intense, so move slowly. And then from a tabletop position, just kind of wag your tail back and forth. 
side to side. Just kind of releasing the hips gently. Then you can add a little bit of a cat and cow like movement. Side to side, cat and cow. Just gentle, focusing on the pelvis and the hips a bit here. Good. And then nice and slow, just come to sit on your butt. You can move your blanket out of the way. And gently take the soles of your feet together, knees wide. Nice and open through our hips. Good. And take the hands behind you. So we're going to work on an opening here. So I want you to just actively push the knees down, just using the strength of your legs. So we're not using our hands. We don't want to force it here. Just use the strength. Press your feet together and push your knees down. And then release that, kind of relax the legs. And do a few of these. So tighten, press the feet together, push the knees down, and then soften, relax. Engage, feet together, knees down, and relax. And the hands are just behind you for support. Keep going here. Think about sitting up nice and tall. And a few of these back and forth, relaxing, and then strengthening. And the next time that you're kind of strengthening here, so pushing the feet together, knees down, hold it there. Let's take 10 breaths. You all ask for hips, so hips it is. <laughs> hips are a great, 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 great thing to be doing right now. I know a lot of us are, even as much as we get out, as much as we can, it's still, still a lot more sitting than we're probably used to. Stuck in the house. Good, hang in there, we're about halfway. Staying active, keep pressing the feet together, keep pushing the knees down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Gently release here. Nice and easy, take the hands to the outsides of your knees, pull them up to center. And then just take your legs out in front of you. Shake it out. Take your legs wide now into a straddle. A few options. If you are very tight and you know that this straddle position is super uncomfortable for you, I'm going to give you an option to bend your right knee and bring it to the inside of your thigh. That's half straddle or full straddle. That's your option. Good. So if you're in the half, or full, reach the hands up. Good, now open, turn towards your right, and then side bend towards your left. Take your left hand down to the ground. Reach the right arm long. If you're in the full straddle, it is the exact same thing. If you're in the full straddle, pay attention to your right hip, and same if you've been in the half. Keep the right sit bone down. Try not to let yourself rock up. Think about active in the legs, roll the thighs out. And you should not be feeling any pressure behind the knees. If you do, think about bending the knees a little bit, so kind of engaging through the legs. If you still have the problem of knee pain in straddle position, you can always take like a sock and roll it up so that you have something to prevent hyperextension. Then remember, right sit bone is down. Five more breaths here. Nice and slow, come back upright. And then release. If you're in that half straddle, now is the time to switch it out. Take the left foot in. If you're in the full straddle, stay there. Reach the arms up, everybody. 
This time you're twisting towards the left and then side bending over towards the right. Right hand comes down, left arm reaches long. Same thing, if you're in that half straddle, the left leg's just pulled in. This time your left sit bone's really gonna wanna lift up, so just press it on down and really extend through the body. I'm not worried so much about grabbing the foot. That's maybe eventually where you go, but it's not really that important. You're just going for a nice big stretch to the left side of the body. You do not need to grab the foot to achieve that. Breathe for five, left sit bone is down for four, three, two, and one. Come on up. Good. A few rolls of the shoulders, just relax. Now, taking the legs wide, if you were in that half, then expand both legs out. And we're going to forward fold now. So I'm going to give you an option again. If you're very tight, roll up a blanket, get something so that you can sit decently high. That will help you get this kind of pelvic tilt. So that's what you're looking for. You want your hips to slide forward and down so that your tailbone is released. And even if you don't need it, having it there is helpful. The legs don't need to be super wide. They just can be as wide as you'd like and then start to fold. Find a nice long spine. So we're not going for curled and rounded here. We want to keep the nice length that we're getting through our spine. It's okay if you're a bit more upright. But if you can, keep hinging at your hips, reach the arms long. And if you're a bit more upright, if this is what your straddle looks like, that's fine. One of the things that you can do to work on it is get into a door frame. If you have the door frame right here, so you're kind of straddling the door frame, <laughs> you grab hold of the door frame and you pull yourself into it. That's a nice modification. Again, be careful on the back of those knees. If you start to feel hyperextension, take yourself a little less wide. That should help. Keep breathing here about five more breaths. Good, as you inhale, come on up. And then nice and slow, we're gonna come onto our back. So go ahead and move your blanket or anything out of your way. And come all the way onto your back, gently hug the knees in, and just draw some gentle little circles. Massage out the low back. Take the knees into a tabletop position, so 90 degrees. Take the arms wide and let them fall over to the right. Keep your chest pointing up. Just a nice gentle spinal twist here. If you want to deepen it, that left leg can kind of cross underneath that right leg. Maybe look over your left shoulder and take a nice deep inhale through your nose. And out your mouth. Breathe in, breathe out, find your own natural breathing rhythm.
them nice and slow, pull the legs back up into neutral, uncross them if they've crossed, and just switch. So take the legs over towards the left, option to cross the right leg over the left. You'd be looking over the right shoulder. Nice and slow, bring yourself back into neutral, uncrossing the legs. Good. Cross the right leg over the left in a figure four shape, so kind of a reclining pigeon. Flex the right foot, pull the whole leg unit up into your chest, either threading the needle towards the thigh or all the way to the shin. Pull that right leg in towards the body. Keep flexing your right foot, that'll help protect your knee. Think about your low back. It's really common to round up off the ground, but try to really stick your low back or sacrum down onto the earth. Good. Take your left foot to the ground, but just keep this shape of the legs. Cross your right leg all the way over. And let your knees fall to the left, but pull your knees in towards your chest really tight. So kind of grabbing onto the knees, letting your chest stay open. As you do this, you should feel kind of a nice big stretch. You might get a bit of a popping sensation in the spine. So you're pulling the knees in and letting them fall over towards the left. Maybe feeling a big stretch to the right side of your back and your glute. Again, chest is opening to the ceiling. Knees to the left, but knees pulling in towards your chest like a little ball. Good. And then release that and we'll switch it out. Cross the left leg over into that figure four shape and pull the knees in first here. Keeping your low back down, just more, another breath or two. Good. And take your right foot down to the ground. And so again, I'll walk you through this nice and slow. Cross the left leg all the way over. Pull the knees in towards your chest, kind of grab on, and start to rotate the legs over towards the right. Nice and slow. They kind of fall over towards the right a bit. Keep pulling the knees in towards your chest but then open your chest towards the ceiling. So this should feel like a nice deep stretch through the glute and possibly through the back. So just thinking here, knees to the right, knees to the chest, chest up. If you kind of get that, you should get the sensation that we're looking for here. Good. All right, pull the legs up to center, untwist them here. One final bridge to just square ourselves off, neutralize our spine and pelvis. Take the feet down to the ground, hip width distance, push through the feet, lift the hip up. Hands to the ground, option to interlace underneath you if you'd like. Press down through all sides of your feet, 10 breaths here. Breathing deeply into the belly. About halfway, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out.
Just two more. Hips are high, last one. And then exhale, let the hips fall to the ground, release the hands. Let's come into our final resting pose. Before you do so, if you've got a blanket or a bolster, I recommend just gently rolling it up into a kind of little spiral shape for yourself. And slipping that underneath your knees. That will feel really nice on your back, especially if you were doing some of the harder back bendy stuff today. That'll help release the spine a bit. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. Just come to lie on your back. And let's take a few breaths together. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it. Out the mouth. In through the nose. Hold it. Out the mouth. The last one, big inhale. Hold. And out. Closing the eyes. Unclenching your jaw, letting your body melt. nice and slow start to wake the body up wiggling through the toes and the fingers just waking the body up gently moving a bit through the arms shoulders and then reaching the arms overhead taking a deep breath and exhale relax the body Bend your knees. Hug the knees in towards your chest. Take your knees nice and wide and just rock yourself side to side a little bit, breathing. Then rock yourself all the way over onto your right side and resting your head on your right arm. Then nice and slow, push down through the left hand and then the right, bringing yourself into seated nice and slow. Let your head come up last. Sitting up nice and tall, one skin, one final time. Let your body feel relaxed and soft, no rush here. 
these last few moments are for you. Nothing else. Breathe in through your nose. And out the mouth. Breathe in. Releasing out. Take your hands to prayer. Take a deep breath in, reach the hands up. And as you exhale, fold down, taking the hands to the ground, reaching along. As you inhale, start to sit back upright. Blinking, open the eyes. And just take a moment before you move on, just observe your surroundings. Breathing deeply. Thank you so much for joining me today for this slow flow practice. Namaste. Thanks once again for joining me again. My name is Kat from Healthy Obvious. I am making these videos for free, but if you like them, please donate or subscribe or share them. Any of those things are super helpful for me um, and help keep me motivated. You can also visit my site. I do a lot of other stuff than just yoga, a lot of crazy stuff. So check it out, healthyhobbyist.com. See you next time. <laughs>